about the 95-96 season was uh, South Australia, you know, the form side going into the season? Oh, look, we, we'd been beaten by Queensland the year before in the Shield final in Brisbane. That was, we actually, with a team to hand Queensland their first Shield. So, so we'd been building for a couple of years and going into that season, we were probably one of the favourites, yes. You faced uh, Western Australia in the final at Adelaide Oval. Um, what was their list like? Well, that, that, interestingly, they had a similar list. They had, uh, you know, I think Tom Moody was the captain, and they had Brendan Julian, and Damien Martin, Adam Gilchrist, Justin Langer, Joe Angel, Brad Hogg. So they had a they had a very similar side that had had exposure to international cricket as well. So it, in, in all seriousness, I, I don't think we've probably seen since that probably Shield final, the calibre of player playing in the Shield final in Shield cricket because there were some serious players playing. What's it like to play at Adelaide Oval and, and what was the pitch like for that game? Yeah, look, look the pinnacle is to play at, you know, at Adelaide Oval. I've, I've had played at the MCG when I was playing Victoria, but uh, Adelaide Oval's steep with history and it's uh, always been, uh, I suppose, spin friendly over the years before the drop-in pitches came in recently. But, you know, the pitch was its normal Adelaide Oval pitch, uh, probably uh, held together a bit longer than a normal Shield game and because this one was going for five days. So. And normally when you've got a, a home final, you roll the hell out of the, the pitch and uh, to make sure it's nice and flat. What was the Redback strategy going into the game? Oh, look, you, you, we, we went in trying to win the game. Like, you know, it's, uh, and at Adelaide Oval, you always want to bat first because uh, it means that the opposition's batting last on a wearing dry pitch, especially when it gets to that you know, high 30 degrees, 40 degrees, the pitch starts falling apart, so you don't want to be batting last on it. So, so uh, you know, you always want to win the toss, make as many as you can, and then uh, go to work on the opposition. So we, we, we set out to win it, and, you know, the game just seesawed. Every day it was, uh, it was seesawing, and I think it was to do with the quality of player. Mm -hmm. You know, Adam Gilchrist making 170 at the time, you know, uh, blew the game apart halfway through it. So what, what's that like as a leg spinner to bowl to someone like Alan, Adam Gilchrist when he's just absolutely on fire? Oh, um, it, it was scary, to be honest. Uh, he arrived in that game. Uh, Tim May and myself were bowling in tandem. And I think there was a, a temporary stand where his uh, cow corner was. And I think he put me into that stand probably four, five, six times. And Maisie a similar number. Uh, he just ripped us apart. I think it was in day three, or day might have been late on day two into day three, and made a brilliant 170. And uh, yeah, he was he was he arrived uh, basically the game where he announced himself as a player of the future. Your role in that famous final um, probably was more um, for being a batsman. Um, as opposed to the bowler. Well, I always say that I set the game up with a hundred, none for 150, I think I went for. So I set it up to go for five days. But look, I, I'd been doing some night watchman duties, which you know, meant that I could hang around and, uh, and sort of protect the batsman at the, uh, the end of the day. Or, you know, if, if we'd lost quick wickets and we, we were going to a break, I'd be a night watchman. So. I was renowned for hanging around with not many shots. So. In your, your first innings, um, Brendan Julian, I believe he might have uh, got you after three balls. Do you, do you have any recollection yeah, of that one? I think he did, yeah. Um, it might have been LB, uh, LBW I think it was. Yeah, yeah, so, uh, yeah, BJ, uh, quality swing bowler, you know, left arm swing bowler. And, uh, yeah, and I was mindful of that in the second innings as well because they'd set me up to get me out leg before in the first innings and we were successful. Yeah. So that was in the back of my mind in the second innings to make sure I wasn't getting my leg in, in front of the stumps and letting the bat flow freely. So Heading into the last day, uh, Peter, I understand you went out for dinner with Tim yeah, May. I did, just um, Maisie and myself, yes. <laughs> Tell us a little bit, bit about what did you have for dinner and, and what were you thinking uh, leading into that last day of cricket? Look, uh, Maisie and I are great mates. Uh, 
love to love the curry, so we head, headed to this uh, Indian curry house in Stepney. I, I'm not sure, even sure if it's around today, but uh, um, I, I can't. Re- we, we liked hot curry, so you know, if there was a fowl in the house, we'd have a fowl. But it would have been. I, I remember a vindaloo on the menu, so it was just Maisie and I, and we just been reminiscing about the game and uh, you know, he said this is going to go to the wire. Things were looking pretty dire yep. uh, on that fifth day and South Australia had to survive. Um, what was it like in the in the dressing room? Were people starting to, to worry? Or? Uh, some inter- interesting characters and personalities in the dressing room and you know we had uh, we, we, we had partnerships that had built through the day and then we thought we're going okay and then you know all of a sudden we'd lose one wicket and then you know Jamie Siddons the captain came in and he he hung around for two hours and, and made four and it became a game of survival virtually after lunch because we knew we probably couldn't get the runs but you know guys were that nervous in the room that uh, you know I think Paul Nose went off down the the River Torrens for a walk. Greg Blewett was building a house, so he jumped in his car and went and checked his house. And then, you know, while we're batting, I look up and there's Darren Lehman. He's bandaged himself up like a mummy, just trying to release the, you know, the tension in the room. So yeah. <laughs> there was all sorts of things going on in the dressing room. So. Finally, Shane George comes to the crease with yourself. Yep. Uh, and that's the final pair. Yeah. Uh, what was the message that went out to you guys and what did you say to each other? I'd been facing Brad Hogg and not doing a great job of it. So, and Shane, Shane never liked the fast bowling. Again, fast bowler, yeah. you know, he just didn't like the short stuff. So the message came out that you know I was to take the, the quicks and Georgie was to face Brad Hogg. So. Word seemed to travel around Adelaide. And yeah. Every man and his dog went yep. down to Adelaide Oval to yep. watch the game. What, what's your recollections of the crowd today? Uh, Oh, look, in those last few overs. Yeah, people started coming down the ground and it was like all of a sudden, you know, we'd gone from, you know, you'd normally get a three, four, five thousand crowd. You know, it's quickly turned into 15,000 people. And, you know, it was, uh, and I remember them coming in and counting down the balls, like from 30 balls, like the old green bottle. Yeah. Uh, for, you know, and they were counting the balls down and I remember them being inside the fence as well. And, uh... And I st- to this day, I still bump into people and say, oh, I was at the Oval that day, I remember you. A special day in South Australian history. It is, and, it, and it's, it, you know, 25 years ago, we don't win shields very regularly. And, uh, you know, so to have a game like that, I, I don't think there has been a game like that in the history of shield cricket where it's gone the five days with a draw from the home side when it takes the shield. So, yeah, just incredible, incredible game when you look back at it. So the last over, Brendan Julian is yep. bowling to you. Yep. Six balls, you've got to survive. Yep. If you get out, they, so, they win the over. shield. Yep. How, how did those last six balls play out? Do you remember? Yeah, look, um, you know, obviously I knew I had to face the last over. Uh, and there's just an adrenaline going through you because you know, you know you've got people up in the dressing room that are relying on you. and. Uh, yeah, you know, again, I was just thinking, right, I've got to get forward. I've got to make sure that you know I'm not getting hit in the pads in front, and uh, and I'd, I'd take a little walk off to square leg each time, gather my thoughts, clear my mind, and come back. It felt like the over went for about 20 minutes. Um, I'm not sure how long it went for, but uh, they were trying to stall it and hold it up so that I'd get more, I suppose, time in between balls to think about things. And uh, and then when I finally got to that last ball. Um, I had to check myself because I took off and and I had to check myself for a few seconds uh, in, in case I'd run out of my crease and they could have yeah. run me out, right? So I sort of stood there thinking, right, what's next? We've won this thing. And then I sort of took off behind the crease and then I just ran and did some bunny hops. So, you know, I was just that excited to get up into the room. So. Um, the celebrations with the team, yeah. I imagine it would Incredible. have been amazing. Incredible, yeah. And it went on for several days. And, uh, you know, we, we, I think um, we won it on the Wednesday and I think we got the keys to the city. We had a little uh, parade down uh, King William Street. Uh, it, I think that was the Friday, Friday afternoon, if you memory. Uh, I had to get into a, a club final with Tea Tree Gully on the Saturday, but um, 
so there was no sleep for two or three days. Um, yeah, Tim May had the planet back then, so we spent a bit of time in there, and yeah, it was uh, just incredible because we we lost a couple of guys that retired. We knew they were going to retire. Yeah, you know they were at the end of their career, so to actually win it, with those guys going out. You know, James Brayshaw was heading into the media, so yeah, so it was it was party time for a few days. Let's go. We got close in 1995 in a game up north to Lauren Border's side. It hurt to see that one slip away as we were bowled out on the fifth day. This was a lesson that we learned well. You gotta scrap and fight like hell. In 96 we were at our peak. A home final learned we were on the brink. No, this is blue Top the order, Brayshaw and Lehman were prolific scorers. Weber first drop and Nielsen kept stumps. Sins led us from the front. May and McIntyre made an art of spin. Hammond the coach in his third season. Gillespie and George were genuine quicks. Johnson was the sub and he carried the drinks. This could be something great, something that this town needs. And it's been 40 years since the shield. Team. Rudy and his men came out from the west to Adelaide over for the final test. Let's forget prepared a dry flat track. They won the toss and chose to bat. The Warriors set about building a lead. Adam Bill Chris was unleashed at the crease. He picked it up as it left the hand. Smashes round the ground and into the stands. On the second day, WA declared. Occupy, throw things back, kill some time. We made it through to early day four. Nodes made a ton of brain sure the devil scored. The left arm express took a five we could haul. Two in both back in time and just soon more. We came down, I crossed my fingers, crossed my eyes. Hold on tight, hold on for dear life. I'm on the edge of
magnificent. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. You've captured it all in the, the whole game. And the beat, like the music's fantastic.